Here are five lessons that you can teach your kids straight out of the Bible how to live a victorious, virtuous life. Let's go. Hey guys, my name is Mark Cassara. Thanks for joining my channel. We like to talk about faith, family, and finances, and generally just how to live a good life. Guys, we're going to talk about five lessons that I've learned over the years uh, that I implement in my life and in my family, and I teach my kids on a regular basis. Now, these five lessons are generally life lessons that you can find anywhere, but they're rooted in in the good word. They're rooted in the good book, the Bible. And so I want to bring your attention to the first one, uh, which is one we've learned as we were little, little kids in school. And when our preschool teacher would teach us how to sit nicely and play with our friends, this, guys, is the golden rule. Now, did you know that the golden rule do unto others as you would have them do unto you, is found directly in the Bible. It's actually found in Matthew 7, 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. Guys, this simple yet profound teaching basically gives you the framework of how to live a good life. When we're sitting there as young kids, you know, we don't necessarily know all the time how to be good. Guys, we're, we're born into a broken world. The first thing that we want to do is take, 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 steal, 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 mine, mine, mine. And so we have to be taught how to treat others with goodness and kindness. See, the golden rule encourages your kids to practice selflessness when it comes to interacting with others, how to put others first. Okay, it's a great foundation to teach your kids. You can teach them from ages one years old all the way up to, you know, into adulthood, guys, to be honest with you, because even as your kids get older, you got to still remind them how to be a good person because sometimes it just doesn't click, okay? Number two, we're going to talk about humility. Guys, what does humility mean to you? What does being humble mean to you? Is humility looked at as a weakness in our society? Sometimes I think that being humble and having a humble heart and a humble spirit is looked at as a weakness in our society. See, out of Philippians 2, 3 through 4, it says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but in each of you, looking to the interest of others. Guys, that's a powerful statement right there. It's telling you to always put the next person in front of you. And when, even in business, guys, when you're uh, out there and you're in the work field, and in, the, in the workforce, and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to create a niche for yourself. You're trying to create that position for yourself. We're usually taught in the corporate world to pull people down and to step on people in order to climb that success ladder. What if I were to tell you that if you lift people up, you're more likely to get a higher position because people are going to look at you as a team player. They're going to look at you as somebody who is wanting others to win and not just out for your own selfish gain. Teach your children how to be humble. Teaching children how to be humble and selfless, excuse me, can lead to a more harmonious life and allow them to have more harmonious relationships with others. Guys, let's talk about number three, forgiveness. Forgiveness is big. Forgiveness is one of those things that if you don't learn how to forgive, you will carry baggage with you for the rest of your life. Now, forgiveness isn't easy. But if we teach our kids how to forgive while they're young, it will be easier for them to forgive when they're older, as they get older. If we teach them how to forgive when, when a child steals a toy from them or when they get you know pushed over and they fall down accidentally or whatever the case may be, if we teach them how to forgive now, later on when they have bigger things happen to them, they'll be more inclined to know what to do and how to forgive later on down the road. Forgiveness. In Ephesians 4, 32, it says, Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other just as Christ forgave you. Now, for those who don't believe in the Bible or don't even know what, what is inside the Bible, Jesus forgave us. When he was crucified and died on the cross, 
Jesus at that point forgave us of everything that we would ever do. He forgave us, therefore we need to learn to forgive others. That's a mind-blowing virtue for some people because some people can't forgive. Some people have a hard time forgiving. Whether your parents did something to you or a best friend did something to you or an ex-spouse did something to you, it is hard to forgive. It is hard to forgive. And sometimes we carry this baggage with us for the remainder of our life and we're, we're carrying tons and tons and tons of just garbage and luggage on our lives that, that we're walking through lives with just a downcast soul because we haven't originally forgave the person that hurt us. Sometimes it even comes down to forgiving ourselves, forgiving ourselves for things that we did, forgiving ourselves for things that we did to ourselves or we did to others. Guys, forgiveness is huge. Teach your kids how to forgive, they'll live a victorious and virtuous life. Let's talk about number four, work ethic. Now, work ethic is more of a practical virtue. It's found in Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working directly unto the Lord and not unto man. This verse right here encourages you to work or your children to work as if they're working unto the Lord and not unto man. You see, you can do this if you're a street sweeper. You can do this if you're a garbage man. You can do this if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, if you're a construction worker. If you're working not unto man, not trying to please man, but you're working unto the Lord, you'll always make sure that you do the right thing. You'll always make sure you do above and beyond what your duty calls for because you're doing it for your heavenly Father. You're not doing it just to get by. See, most people in our society, they'll just do enough not to get fired. They'll just do enough not to be noticed. They'll just do enough just to keep their peace. If you have a strong work ethic and you work and do everything as you would do it unto the Lord, I'm telling you, promotions are in sight. Know your worth first and foremost, because when you know your worth, you know that what you do is valuable. People around you will also see it and they'll start to value what you do. And guys, last but not least, let's talk about number five, contentment. Contentment. What does it mean to be content? It says Paul in Philippians, Philippians 4, 11 through 12 says this, I have learned to be content in whatever the circumstances are. I know what it is to be in need, Paul says, and I know what it is to have plenty. He says he knows what it is to be poor, living on the street, having nothing, scrounging for bread, eating soup, ramen noodles, cheese sandwiches for lunch, and he knows what it is to have plenty. He knows what it is to choose from the left side or the right side of the menu, depending on what restaurant you go to, the expensive side. He knows what it is to still be in need, but he knows what it is to have plenty. And he says, in all things, I have learned the secret of being content in every situation. But sometimes we need to learn contentment when we're in the valley. Maybe we haven't got to our goals yet. Maybe we haven't achieved our success. Sometimes overnight success takes 15 years to achieve. People see this tip of the iceberg. They see all this success that people have, but they don't realize all the struggle that they went through. And so having a a spirit of contentment, having a virtue of being content in all things will help you live a long, prosperous, virtuous, and victorious life. Teach your kids to be content when they have things. Teach your kids to be content when they don't have things. In all things, in every area of life, Show them how to be content. Sometimes delayed gratification is the best type of gratification, guys. Sometimes it's okay not giving your kid that toy as soon as they ask for it. Sometimes it's okay not giving that child what they ask for immediately, but instead having them work for it or delaying it until they complete a task. Sometimes in my household, my kids want to play games or they want to buy something at the store. You know, like my coach, uh, Patrick Bet David, does with his kids, he has a currency of pages, currency of pages. So I tell my kids, give me 10 pages and we'll consider it. Give me 20 pages in that new book you're reading and we'll consider it. Sometimes it's okay for them to just be content with what they have rather than always, always consuming and always, always getting. So guys, that's a lesson for me too. Being content in every everything, in every situation, whether you have, whether you don't have, whether you're going through the valley or whether you're on top of the mountain, being content in every area of your life is 
powerful, guys. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this series of five virtues learned directly from the Bible that you can teach your kids and you can raise your family to have a successful, victorious, and virtuous life. Make sure you click that thumbs up button. Click the subscribe button. Let's get these subscribers going. Share this video out to your social media. And as always, we hope you live well, laugh loud, and learn to be a better you. God bless. We'll see you in the next one.